أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello students Welcome once again to our e-learning class This is the second period of thesis for this week My name is Oladimiji Tiye The SS2 physics teacher in the last class we had, we look at definition of waves, types of waves, where we classify waves into mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. We also look at the two classification of mechanical waves, the transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Today, we want to look at graphical representation of a wave. We want to look at graphical representation of a wave. A wave can be represented as shown in the diagram below. If you look at the diagram very well, you can see that it represents what we use in representing the transverse wave in the last class. There are a series of up and downs in the diagrams where the hope and the upward displacement of the medium from the equilibrium point is called the amplitude as shown in the diagram but the point of maximum upward displacement is called the crest for transverse waves but for longitudinal wave it is called compression so the graph as we can see, can stand for both transverse waves and longitudinal waves. For a transverse wave, the point of maximum upward displacement is known as crest, but in longitudinal wave, the point will represent compressions. Also, in transverse wave, the point of maximum downward displacement is known as the trough, but in longitudinal wave now, it's going to represent the rear fractions. Also, from the diagram, you can see the distance between two successive crests is equal to one wavelength. Also, the distance between two successive troughs is also equal to one wavelength. Also, one wavelength is also the distance covered when the wave has completed a cycle, that is, from the point O at the equilibrium point to point A where the wave has completed a cycle. So the distance cover is also one wavelength. So this graph represents the general representation of a wave. Let's move to terms used in describing waves. First, crest. Like I defined in the last class, this is a point on the transverse wave where there is a maximum upward displacement of the particles of a wave from the equilibrium position. Trough. This is a point on the transverse wave where there is a maximum downward displacement of the particles of the wave from the equilibrium position. Compression. This is a region on a longitudinal wave where the waves particles are closed due to increasing pressure. Rear fraction. This is a region on the longitudinal wave where the wave particles are spaced out due to decreasing pressure. I've explained all this in the last class. Phase. The particles of a wave are said to be in phase when they are at the same vertical distance from their main position and are moving in the same direction. Amplitude A. This is the maximum displacement of particles as measured from the equilibrium position. The maximum upward or downward displacement of the particles of a wave as measured from the equilibrium position is what we call the amplitude. Then the period. This is the time taken by a particle of a wave to complete one cycle or oscillation. The unit is seconds. It can also be divided as the time taken for the wave to cover one 
wavelength. Frequency. This is defined as the number of complete oscillations the wave makes in one second. It is measured in hertz. Wavelength. This is the distance between two successive crests or trough of a wave. It can also be defined as the distance covered by the wave after completing an oscillation. It is measured in meters. Wave velocity. This is the distance set the wave travel per unit time. It is measured in meter per second. Now let's move to properties of waves. Under this, we will look at reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and polarization of waves. Then we look at stationary waves. Let's go. Reflection of waves. Reflection occurs in waves when they encounter an obstacle and are made to propagate in the opposite direction, as shown in the diagram below. So when a wave is traveling and it encounters an obstacle on the way, the wave will be forced to move in the opposite direction. Let's study the diagram as shown. We can see that there is a wave moving towards a, an a place of its P. The wave is moving horizontally, but on striking the place of its P, the direction is changed and the wave moves in, in, in another direction as shown in the diagram. The original wave moving before striking the place of the plane obstacle is known as incident wave. And the wave obtained after striking the plane obstacle is called the reflected wave. Then the line which is perpendicular to the plane surface is called the normal to the surface. Yes. So this is reflection of a wave on striking a plane surface. Let's move to reflection can also occur in sound and light waves. So sound heat after reflection of sound wave is called an echo. Let's move to refraction of waves. Refraction occurs when the wave is made to travel through media of different densities. That is when the wave travels from one medium to another medium of different density. So refraction is the change in speed and direction of the waves as they cross the boundary between two media of different density. The angle of incidence in, is the angle the direction of the incident wave makes with the normal at the boundary surface. The angle of refraction R is the angle the direction of the refracted ray makes with the normal to the plane boundary. Let us look at the diagram again. We can see a wave coming from medium 1 and entering the medium 2. You can see that as the wave is coming from medium 1, on entering the medium 2, the path of traveling changes. This is due to the change in speed as the wave travels from one medium to another because the densities of the media are different. So the hangu the incident wave makes with the normal is called the angle of incidence, as it is shown in the medium one. Then the angle, the refracted wave makes with the normal is called the angle of refraction, as it is shown in the diagram. The original wave coming from medium one is called the incident wave. Why the wave obtained? after the refraction in the medium 2 is called the refracted wave, as shown in the diagram.
Then, the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2, which is given as 1n to 2, is given by the speed of wave in medium 1 over the speed of wave in medium 2. It is also given by speed in deep water over speed in shallow water, assuming the wave is traveling from deep water to shallow water. So the refractive index of the water is obtained using the formula speed in the deep water over speed in the shallow water. Another formula of getting the refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 is by finding the sign of angle of incident in the medium 1 over the sign of angle of refraction in the medium 2. Let's go to diffraction of waves. Diffraction is the bending or spreading of waves around corners when traveling waves encounter obstacle with a hole or aperture. The bending of wave depends on the size of the aperture. If the width of the aperture is bigger than the wavelength, the waves will emerge parallel and no reflection will take place. But if the size of the aperture is smaller than the wavelength, the waves bend and spread out as shown in the diagrams below. What they are saying is that diffraction is the spreading out of a wave when the wave passes through a narrow opening or hole or aperture. But it is not every hole that will produce diffraction. So the hole that will produce a diffraction must be comparable with the wavelength of the waves coming through it. As shown in figure A, the opening is too wide, is wider than the wavelength of the wave. So the emerging waves, after passing through the opening, is not diffracted. It emerges parallel. But in figure B, the opening is smaller than the wavelength of the wave coming. So the emerging wave, after passing through the hole, is diffracted. So for a diffraction to take place, the opening or the aperture must be smaller than the wavelength of the wave coming. Let's go to interference. Interference is a phenomenon whereby two or more waves of the same frequency, amplitude and wavelength, traveling in the same direction are superimposed or overlap. We have two types of interference, namely constructive and destructive interference. What is constructive interference? This occurs when two waves are superimposed in the same phase, that is, crest on crest or troughs on troughs. This will lead to increase or maximum disturbance. This occurs when the path difference between two waves is a whole number of wavelengths. The line joining the point where there is constructive interference are called antinodal lines. Destructive interference. This occurs when the two waves are out of phase, that is when the crest of one overlap with the troughs of another wave. This results in the complete cancellation of the effect. This occurs when the path difference between the two waves is a whole number plus a half wavelength, that is, path difference is equal to n plus half lambda, where n is whole number, 0, 1, 2, 3, so, so, so. The lines joining the point where there is destructive interference are called nodal lines. Here, the resultant disturbance is 0, and the waves appear stationary, as shown in the diagram below. You can see in constructive interference, crest falls on crest and troughs fall on troughs. But in destructive interference, the crest of one wave falls on the trough of the other and they cancel each other out. Let's move to polarization of waves. Polarization is a phenomenon that differentiates 
the transverse wave from longitudinal waves. Polarization takes place in transverse waves only. A wave is said to be plane polarized if it is constrained to vibrate in one plane. Polarization occurs with light waves and other electromagnetic waves such as radio waves, X-ray, infrared radiation, ETC. That is, all transverse waves can be polarized. Polarized light can be produced using a polarizer such as tourmaline crystal, quartz, or polaroid. A polarizer will only allow light vibration of only one direction to pass through it. Any other vibration will be absorbed, as shown in the diagram below. Since the plane of polarization is vertical, only vibration in the vertical direction will pass through the polarizer. Another means of polarizing light wave is by reflection. If light is incident at an angle of 57 on the polished surface of a glass plate, the reflected ray is plain polarized as shown in the diagram below. Practical application of Polaroid. Polaroid are used in sunglasses to control or reduce the intensity of incident light and to eliminate, eliminate reflected light. Polaroid can also be used to eliminate light glare from window panes, glass doors, and polished tabletop ETC. And this is where we are going to end the second period of thesis for this week. Until when I will come your way again in the third time, which is going to take in the third period, which is going to take place this week again. Once again, my name is Oladimiji Chihe, the physics teacher of SS2. I'm saying Salamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.